Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number nine of this NHL 22 Quebec Nordiques relocation franchise mode here as we've moved the Arizona Coyotes from Arizona up to Quebec. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, head up into that top corner of the video right now. There will be a card with a link to the playlist for you all. And well, today we get into our first ever playoffs with the Quebec Nordiques. Obviously, the Nordiques just eh, didn't do fantastic over the last couple seasons. I'll be pulling up some spreadsheet info here, but, you know, 82 and 92 points in our first two seasons, really, and didn't make the playoffs, did not qualify, and, um, you know, that is what it is. It sucks, but we can't really do much about it, so today we gotta make the most of it, but a couple comments to get through here first from the last video. First off, Drayden Pletz said... The future of the Quebec Nordiques is insane. Great draft so far, Etanio. So thank you, Drayden. We've been, yeah, we, we have been nailing some prospects. It kind of blows me away at how good some of these guys have been. Um, Mr. Waternew said, uh, just came back from franchise mode, just had a draft as good as you. So that's awesome to hear. Um, I love that you guys are able to kind of, you know, learn from uh, what I'm doing with the tutorials and these videos and, uh, you know, implement it into your own drafts. And something else I didn't really get to show you guys yet, but we need to take a look at is the growth and development of this team. So obviously Patrice Bergeron, Tarasenko, certain guys have lost um, a bit of their edge. Other guys like Wright and Bedard have just shot up like crazy. But when we actually go in and take a look at this team... Thorson's grown quite nicely too. Apart from that, nothing too crazy overall. Um, a lot of guys did kind of stay at the same level they're at, so hopefully if we can start winning, that's going to change. But Tim Bodie shot up immensely. Same with Caleb Ortmeier, who's going to be NHL ready here soon, and uh, as well as Matthias Silvegard, who is looking quite nice as well. I'm really excited for him. His defense went way up, so that's interesting. Um, apart from that, Lazowski, Peverly, Andrew Chuck, Gunler, you know, quite a few guys are growing very well. For whatever reason, Nathan Gaucher just did not grow this year, which is a little concerning, especially, again, since we have such a decent power forward prospect there. But, um, yeah, it's just a little annoying when you put guys in the right spot and they just don't grow. It, it happens sometimes, and I don't know exactly what we're going to do with that. Um, a guy like Pavel Semen, although he hasn't grown much, looks like he's going to be really good too in the future. Um, and then guys like, you know, Quick and Crane and Jurasek just did not make any improvements this year, unfortunately. So that's what we're dealing with. That's where we're at with the prospects and well again if you missed last episode i would recommend you go and check it out as really it was a pretty solid episode as far as we made it all the way to the playoffs didn't face too much adversity with this team and of course we do currently have um connor bedard out of the lineup we did not check his timeline last episode but we're going to move thorson up to the second line with Wright and bergeron there so to actually get an ideal timeline for Bedard. This is going to determine if he even plays in the playoffs or not. And he is out with a, a sore shoulder until April 21st. Okay, so we're currently at the 17th. Okay, so we're only going to miss Bedard for a couple of games, which is fantastic. And, well, now we've got the Buffalo Sabres. So I'm not really going to go into too much depth and detail about how good the Sabres are. We know they're good. They've got Eichel. They've got uh, Coltonen, who we made the trade for and ended up with Bedard, who seems to have grown significantly better. But we're going to go game by game. We're pretty much going to slow sim the majority of this as it's our first ever playoff. So let's see how the Nordiques can do in game one against the Sabres. First period, 12 to 8, we get outshot, but we did open the scoring. Dylan Cousins gets the tie in goal there late in the first period. Second period, it is a 1 1 game still, 21 to 18 in shots for the Sabres. And heading into the third, the Sabres open the scoring. Philip Forsberg gets the opener for the third period, breaks the deadlock. And now we got to see the Nordiques do come back as Claude Giroux is able to tie this one up. Power play for the Nordiques 
does not go through unfortunately that's too bad i was hoping we'd convert on that we are starting to inch back and outshoot the buffalo sabers but by the looks of it game one will be headed to overtime and well Although I would love to play into the drama of game one, it is just game one, so let's see how OT goes. Power play for the Nordiques doesn't convert in overtime. That is too bad. We are out shooting them, and the game is over, and it's going to go to the Sabres, as I believe that Sean Walker gets the game winner there in overtime. That one just stings, and you know, when we have a goalie played both goalies played very well lots of shots and a 3-2 game so we lose a tight one in our first game and we are the favorite to win this as well just based on the fact that we had a better season last year or in the regular season so that's not a great start on home ice but let's see what we can do in game two as uh hopefully the nordiques can bounce back here and get something going first period of game two it's a one nothing buffalo lead Colton and gets the goal on just one of eight shots and Quebec gets nine and no goals second period it's a two to one Quebec Nordiques lead as Claude Giroux and Shane Wright both put pucks in the net Shane Wright on the power play too we're out shooting them 21 to 12 heading into the third period here and well let's see if the Nordiques can grow this lead five on three for the Sabres does not convert but they do tie it up Victor Olofsson there on Five on five, I by the sounds of it. Power play now for the Sabres. Doesn't convert, but Victor Soderstrom finds the back of the net just a minute after that to make it a 3-2 lead. Then it's 4-2 as Tarasenko converts on a power play goal. And by the looks of it, 5-2. Bergeron makes it 5-2. This one is going to be going to the Quebec Nordiques. They come back and make a bit of a statement saying, hey, you got a close one on us last game, but that's not happening this game three points for Soderstrom and Tarasenko what a game for those guys Pedersen 931 save percentage in the game too so yeah pretty solid um game two there of this series so one win one overtime loss heading into game number three now and we do get our young superstar Connor Bedard back and well I don't know exactly where we're gonna play him if he's gonna be down lower here what's gonna be happening but as a center, like again, we, we got both these guys listed as centers. Um, I think it, it is going to make a difference on how they play based on if we play them at center or on the wing overall. But here's the real question. Do we play Pavelski over a guy like Paul Yarvey? It probably does help the chemistry a little bit, but... Jared Hayden looks really good there too. And anyways, um, I don't think we're going to adjust the lineup too, too much. Obviously, we have a very deep lineup. And um, yeah, I'm just not super worried about him, honestly. So um, maybe we switch Riley down to the second pair. Go Chitrin over. I just don't understand why this doesn't work so well. Yeah, I, I would rather have Chitrin looks really good there. Okay. I think we keep it like this just for now. But man, like the second that um Soderstrom or Brewer takes any more of a step, we're we're totally promoting them. So Pedersen's done really good up to this point. Um only let in five pucks in two games whereas buffalo's goalies led in seven but heading into buffalo now for game three let's see what we can do so first period of game three it's a 3-2 nordiques lead as connor bedard makes his impact immediately claude Giroux with two goals as well drew and asplund also get goals and yeah not a bad start there all right heading into the second period buffalo ties at 3-3 dylan cousins makes this one an even game heading into the third power play for the nordiques does not convert and buffalo seems to just be getting more shots at this point so the goal is going to go to the hat trick for Giroux. there he makes it a four to three game he has single-handedly put this team in a position to win but buffalo ties it up again jack eichel there making it 4-4 power play for the nordiques didn't go and we're getting down to the final minutes here of game three is there going to be a decisive factor 
and there is not yet as we head into overtime again this has been crazy and right right off the bat overtime's over and it's going to go to buffalo again Ruotsalainen, I believe is how you say it, wins it in overtime right in front of the net too. So yeah, that's a bit of a rough one. Again, we drop a game in overtime. Claude Giroud, three goals, man. Like you got to get some spaced out scoring a bit more than that. But Giroud, five goals in three games. Oh, we lose Tarasenko to a sore knee out of everything. That's not fantastic to be honest. So um, let's see, Eric Stahl's going to get put into that lineup. Don't know if I agree with that. I think we move the dart up and move Thoris in there. Okay, that should be fine. We'll switch Stahl and Pavelski as well. Okay. This lineup still looks fantastic, so we'll see if Keller can, uh, or if Sheru can boost Connor Bedard at all. He's our right-handed shot. Um, maybe we switch Keller over. Let's try Keller on the right wing for a bit, see if he can improve or make any differences. Um, Thorson hasn't been great so far. We're going to shift him over, play Shane right on his inside hand. Um, we got a lot of righties, so that's maybe something we'll try to look to improve in the f near future is get some more left-handed shot forwards into this lineup that could help but well we'll see what happens here heading into game number four as the sabers have taken a two to one series lead in that another overtime win you can only win so many in overtime you start getting lucky at that point but we head to buffalo again and well we'll see what we can do here but first period it's a two to one lead on just eight shots Morgan Riley opens the scoring. Clayton Keller on the power play makes it 2 0, and then Rasmus Dahling brings it back to within 1. 8 to 11. Jeez, that's, that's pretty significant for first period shots. Second period, it's a 3 to 2 game as Jakob Chitrin makes it a 3 to 1 game. And then immediately after that, I don't know which Roy or Wah this is, um, but makes it a 3-2 game. Buffalo out shooting us heavily, 24-16, heading into the third period. And let's see if the Nordiques can hold on or if the Sabres are going to get back in this one. So starting it off, the Sabres get right back in it. It's been the mood this whole series, and Jack Eichel does what Jack Eichel does. Oh boy, we're really not putting ourselves in a good position, Brad Lambert. Oh my goodness, man, we are out and cold the nordiques give up three goals in a row to pretty much seal this one off and not gonna lie they give up four in a row oh my goodness okay not gonna lie it's gonna be tough to get back from this one i don't know if the nordiques can do it but we'll see what this team is made of after this game jack eichel just takes over that's that's what jack eichel does and well we're gonna have to try to shut him down we got the forwards to shut him down but man, this has been bad. So here we go. We head in to game number five, down three to one as the upper class team of the series. It's not a good look on us, but we're going to have to start clawing back. And on home ice, we got to take one here. We cannot give the Buffalo Sabres anything. So heading into the first period of game five Olafson immediately opens the scoring but Giroud ties it up Claude Giroud's been the absolute bright spot on this team no question about it we'll see if he can continue that eight to seven in shots in the first period heading into the second period it's a three to one lead as Keller and Giroud both get on the board and well this one is ours to lose at this point. A two-goal to two goal lead turns into a three-goal lead as Nolan Patrick makes it 4-1, and then Keller makes it 5-1. Make it 6-1. Just absolutely obliterate the Buffalo Sabres on home ice. Humiliate them. Honestly, that's what we're doing. I'm kind of impressed with how the team's played up to this point. And Buffalo just wasn't ready here. 7-1 Nolan Patrick yet again. Oh my goodness, man. This is, uh, this is the definition of a blowout. And well, being down what's going to be 3-2 to two now, we're going to need another one of those potentially if we're going to survive in this series. So Giroux 
and Keller three points each. Nolan Patrick two goals there. Multi multiple multi point multi goal scorers in this last series, but the youngsters aren't really performing yet. Haven't seen uh, Shane Wright or Clay or Connor Bedard or even Ricard Thorson jumping up on the board here too much. So. Heading into game six, this could be the decisive game of the series, but maybe that one was. Maybe it swung the momentum in our favor. Let's see what happens. So, first period, 2-1 to one Quebec lead. Eichel opens the scoring just 30, 36 seconds in, but Soderstrom and Bergeron respond. Bergeron on the power play there, and it's a 2-1 to one lead, 14-13 to 13 in shots. It's a one-shot game, to be honest. Second period, it is a 3-1 to one game as Patrice Bergeron shows off his playoff experience and gives us a slightly more comfortable lead heading into the third period, but we can't sit on this, we can't get complacent, because if we do, that happens. Jack Eichel scores, making it 3-2, to two, and it is just a one-shot game here with 11 and a half minutes left. Buffalo goes on the power play. They don't convert, though. Victor Soderstrom makes it a 4-2 to two game, not shorthanded, but even strength, and this one... By the looks of it, with just two and a half minutes left, is probably going to be heading to Game 7, and that it will be. So, a great performance again from the Nordiques to bounce back. Victor Soderstrom steps up big time, and obviously Patrice Bergeron too. But yeah, we're getting lots of multi-goal scores in each of these games. It's been pretty, pretty decisive as far as who's going to be scoring when. And, oh, we lose Barrett Hayton to a sore knee. That's not great. All right. Um, so I think they accidentally put Tarasenko back in. Yeah, they did. And as much as I would like him to play, I would rather not risk the re-injury of one of our best players. If that is fair, I think it's a pretty fair statement. So for now, we'll go like this. Um, I guess we'll swap Eric Stahl in there for now. And with Shane Wright not performing too well, I think we are going to shuffle things a little bit here. We're going to try him at third line center. Um, or maybe Bedard. I don't know. Who do, who do we want to try there? Nope, definitely Shane Wright. Okay. Um, and Pavelski on the wing too should be interesting. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, don't know who's going to convert if we're even going to have... Uh, good enough performance from the team to move on here, but it would be nice to win our first ever playoff series and advance to round two. So here we go. Game against Buffalo in Quebec, right in front of the home fans at the Videotron Center. Man, let's see what we can do here. So first period, it's a one nothing Sabres lead. 11 to 8 on shots. Dylan Cousins gets the opener. Second period, it's a 3-1 to one game. Oh, Drouin gets two, Shane Wright gets one. 19-21 on shots. But man, we're in a tough spot right now. We got to uh, we gotta bounce back here, so let's do it. All right, so here we go. Let's see what we can get done here in the third period. See if we can get back into this. Anyways, Claude Giroux going to walk in. Great chance right off the bat. Connor Bedard, great battle, good shot, and we're going to start firing shots like crazy here, but um, Eichel also up there and hits in the first round. That's kind of crazy, so face off here. Giroux's going to lose it. Brodine just skates through everybody. I love it. Forsberg going to get knocked down, and Connor Bedard's going to take off. He comes walking in. Great chance. Sororkin makes another save. Sororkin's in that. Interesting. Okay. So Claude Giroux still on the face-off. He's going to lose yet another one to Eichel. It's not spectacular, but Jack Eichel gets absolutely dummied. Here we go, Connor Bedard down the wing. Looking to make a play. What was that? Colton just absolutely takes that one away. Eichel again getting very physically played here. Good chance. How is that? That would have been kicked in. There's no way that wouldn't have been. 
but a good save from Pedersen regardless. Face off now, gonna go to Bergeron. Bergeron looking to wrap this, or no, it goes back to Bergeron, sorry. Now Bergeron driving down the wing, walks right in front, rebound, Pavelski scores! Bit of a messy one, but we'll take it. Anything that we can get at this point. Our mascot doesn't even have a logo, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this game anymore. It is so sad. But yeah, um... No, not bad at all. That's a, that's a good goal, and we're lagging here. Cool, okay. Pavelski, just his second goal of the playoffs, but... That's what we need from our leader there, and uh, somehow he finds that one, gets it just past Sorokin, and well, one goal game. Bergeron on the faceoff loses to Lambert, interesting. Now Olofsson gets absolutely laid out there by Chitrin, and Chitrin's going to take off down the wing here, looking to make a play, cuts back. Doesn't quite get lined up there. Pavelski now over to Riley, who tees one up. Just missed. Thorson gives the puck away. That's cool. Brad Lambert. Oh my goodness, Pavelski saves the day. What a chance that was. But Shane right now trying to get through here. Pokes it off of Cousins, who gets lined up. And Wright's going to collect this and go for a skate. Here comes Shane Wright right up the middle. He's fresh. Shane Wright, what a goal! That is what a first overall pick does. Shane Wright makes it look way too easy here. Gets his second goal of the night. I guess he did get our first one too, didn't he? But yeah, we come flying back here. Puck on a string. Shane Wright makes it look easy. And just absolutely deeks Sorokin on that move and finishes it easy too. So yeah, Shane Wright really showing why he is potentially going to be the franchise player on this team in the future. But Rustalainen gets bumped off the puck. We're going to reset and try to play smart here. So now Eric Stahl right up the middle to pull Yarvi over to right. He's going to walk one in. Easy shot, better save. Hannafin now over to Middlestad. He turns it over and Stahl's going to kick this one in. Shane right down the wing. He's going to draw a penalty here, too. I believe it was a holding call. Yep. Yep, so R2 Rustalainen going to get the hold on the boards there. Let's make this count. Lawson Krause out on the faceoff because Hayden isn't. Um, and that's not great, but what do you do, right? We, we should actually be fixing this, but oh well. Here we go. Bedard gonna send it up. Kroos right down the middle. He's gonna set up. Bedard tees one. What a goal! Oh my god, are they gonna call that off? It might have gone off his glove. That's that's a good goal all day. It went, goes off of Claude Giroux's chest and into the net. Claude Giroux gets his 7th or 8th goal of the playoffs here. I don't know what happened on that. Why they would call that off, but that's a, that's a good goal to me. 4-3 now, and uh, the Nordiques are playing here. No question about it. Now Bergeron walking in. Good shot. Okay. Now Cousin up to Lambert. Lambert gets dumped in the corner. Riley picks it up. Thorson, good chance. Oh my goodness, we are all over them. Bergeron makes it count too. Buffalo just collapses here. Gives up four straight. And that is going to be enough to lose you a playoff series. My goodness, I mean the tip was just there. But yeah, no contest. Bergeron makes it look real easy. Gets a nice cross check there too. But uh, who cares? That was just some fantastic work. And uh, the Nordiques take a two goal lead off of what seemed like a hopeless third period. Brewer gonna come walking in now. He's gonna tee one up and fire. Easy save. Eichel sends Brodine up. Brodine over to Forsberg, over to Coltonen. 
Coltonen gets defended well there. And they take it at the blue line. They're going to reset. Brodin up to Forsberg. Brewer just absolutely hammers him there. Oh my goodness, great chance for Coltonen to try and tie this one up. He doesn't do so. But uh, we're going to go walking away with the puck here. So, Drew getting back checked real hard. Almost got right through everybody there. And now Connor Bedard going to take off with his wheels. He cuts back but couldn't make the play. Now Clayton Keller, good battle. That was interference on the second play. Asplund going to get stood up there on that one. We're going to send Keller right up the middle here. Clayton Keller comes walking in, tries to defend himself from what I believe was Walker there. Yeah, Walker. I'm going to send it up now. Asplund gets bumped again. Jack Quinn almost goes offside, but a good poke check there. Brewer's going to send Patrick. Oh, and Patrick comes walking in and couldn't get the shot. Chance in front, Lawson Crows off the post. Quinn again lays him out. Great play. Morgan Riley's going to take off down the wall here. He cuts back. Patrick picks it up. Oh, and Patrick over to Chitrin. Chitrin looking through traffic. He's going to shield the puck there. Shoots. Great chance. Better saver trying to go for the same goal as last episode. Oh, Olofsson got killed on that play. Now Jack Quinn as well. Going to get bumped pretty good there. Morgan Riley picking it up. What? And down to the final minute here. Shane right now going to go for a move. He tries to make the play. He's going to pick it up. Shane Wright right to the front of the net. Rebound. And he gets his third goal of the game. Shane Wright doing it all here today. And wow, that was a fantastic play. So three goals in one game. That's when you want your first overall pick to just explode and really finish everything off here. And Sorokin gets made to look silly in this one. My goodness, what a game that was for the Nordiques. Face off here, going to go to Pulyarvi. Pulyarvi, bounce pass, almost goes to stall. Now Hannafin walking down the wall. Timmons, good poke check there. Almost made a good play. Larson walks in. Oh my goodness. Great chance there. Stall misses the pass. What is going on? Oh my goodness. Dude, how on earth are those chances happening? That superstar. It just like starts making random plays and it's really good chances. Claude Giroux leading the entirety of the playoffs and goals. You gotta like that, but Shane Wright's crept way up that list too this game. With four goals in total, three in the game. But uh, here we go. This might be a little bit of a better breakout. Drew N now tries to send Middlestad. And there you have it. The Nordiques somehow move on. Don't ask me how, but they do. Crazy game. Better win. My goodness. What a game that was. That was just fantastic. I can't believe how well they did. So an absolute obliteration here at the end of this game. Chitrin going to go and shake Eichel's hand. All those players going to be uh, looking pretty blurry, actually. That's not very high quality. So, yeah, just another look at kind of everything that went on here. Jack Quinn got laid out there. But, yeah, just so many, so many good chances. And Shane Wright just made it look way too easy this game. Three goals in the game is the difference. So yeah, what a what a performance, what a game that was. 36 shots too. The Nordiques just absolutely took the Sabres apart in that third period. 5-0. And that's it. That's game over big time. <laughs> wow, okay. Now we get to move on.
All right, so after an absolutely ridiculous round one of the playoffs, I don't know if we're going to be wrapping it up or if we're going to uh, be advancing here. I might end up recording this over the span of two days or so, but we shall see um, based on, well, one, how the lineup starts to shape up and two, how everybody plays together here. So I believe the guy we ended up subbing out for Tarasenko was Eric Stahl if I am not mistaken. So we'll put Tarasenko back in here. Not gonna lie, I really did like Connor Bedard on the first line. The only reason it didn't work so well is because we got the same types of players throughout the lineup here. So I think at the moment, we're gonna keep Shane Wright on that third line. I really liked how he played and we put him with a guy like Pavelski. I think they're gonna do just fine, so. Yeah, Shane Wright's grown immensely over the past year and a bit here. And yeah, I can't wait to see what he can really grow into. Um, obviously, 106 points in 162 games. He's not doing bad by any means. He's got 9 points in 7 games in the playoffs here right now. I'd like to see that. He's right behind Claude Giroux, too. And we get the Toronto Maple Leafs for round two. Ooh. Oh, baby, one of the two teams that finished above us in the standings last year. And this should be interesting because I don't know how this battle is going to play out. Oh, my goodness, this is going to be one for the ages. Obviously, Carolina's right below us. Washington's in there. Buffalo is seventh overall. My goodness. Now, here's the question. Did San Jose make it through? I don't know if they did. I would assume they did, but they might not have. Yeah, they did. Okay, so they're playing Vegas. So there's still three other better teams than us in here. So that's going to be interesting. I think we might wrap this one up, do a slightly shorter franchise mode video here this episode, and head into just an absolutely crazy Battle for Canada kind of series here coming up next. That's going to be an insanely fun series to watch and play. We might get obliterated, honestly. Um, yeah, that's that's what we're going up against. So I would not even be that surprised if we just get played here going into this next series. Because, um, yeah, Neil Hunter, Matthews, Marner, holy crap. That is a lineup and a half. And, yeah, I mean, Mrazek there, too. He's going to be good. Yeah, okay. I think that's where we're going to wrap it up for this one. Um, but next episode, we've got Toronto. So let's just go look over our playoff stats one more time, and then that will be it for this one. Um, but yeah, so far, so good, as players have been doing quite well. And Soderstrom, 8 points in 7 games. He's killing it. Clayton Keller's doing all right. Chitrin, 7.7 7 games. I can't believe how well Soderstrom is doing though, like that is just amazing. I'm genuinely amazed at how well he's playing. But yeah, like Shane Wright, Claude Giroux, those guys are just killing it. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun heading in here uh, to this next next episode. But um yeah, that's where we're gonna wrap it up. If you guys enjoyed this one make sure to go down below drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads and of course let me know your thoughts in the comments below for what you want to see coming up here in the next episode apart from obviously the battle of toronto if you want to see any lineup changes if you want to see two garask in net something like that but yeah we've got a tough matchup coming up here in a seven game battle against the leafs next but that's going to be it for me and until next time